Hi, everybody. My name is Michael Clark, and welcome to our first edition of Facts at Five. Uh, we are here at the LTV Media Center in Wainscott, New York. It's Monday, March the 16th. And this is our first shot at a, uh, a daily news program, so please bear with us as we kind of kick the tires and, and get the wrinkles out. Um, so basically, it's a work in progress. You'll see us evolve over time. But you can really give us some uh, a hand. You can help us um, by giving us feedback, comments, whatever it is that you want to see, what you don't want to see. This is your station. This is ultra local television, and we'd like you to tell us what you'd like. Um, obviously, with all that's happening these days, our focus is going to start on the coronavirus and COVID-19. And what with all we do here um, is is Basically, we're, we're going to be giving you the facts only. We're going to be giving you sources and a way that you can track that information should you choose to take it a little bit further. Um, but let's get it going here right away uh, with a focus on the East End, and I'll turn it over to my good friend, Morgan Vaughn. Hi there. Okay, so obviously, well, maybe not so obviously, according to the town's website and to the town's press release, we are... East Hampton town is under a state of emergency. And what that allows um, Peter Vinskoy, our supervisor, to do is to take whatever actions are necessary to protect public health and safety. So one of the things that's happening is the town of East Hampton operated facilities and programs with the exception of the town recycling centers in East Hampton and Montauk will be closed to the public as of today. Monday, March 16th. Town staff will report to work for essential business and can continue to accept and process applications for permits, but we do ask that submissions be made electronically. The town police department will remain open to the public. Meetings of town committees or other groups have been canceled until further notice. Assistance can be provided by the supervisor's office for groups that wish to set up a teleconference. Meetings of the town board and of town appointed groups such as the um, excuse me, town appointed boards such as the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board may proceed, but members of the public are asked to attend in person. Excuse me, <laughs> or exactly the opposite of that, asked not to attend <laughs> in person. Please check with the appropriate department to schedule, and then all these meetings, when they do take place, um, will be broadcast on ltveh.org, live streaming, or can be seen on Channel 22 if you live in the town of East Hampton. Public comments on agenda matters may be submitted to the town clerk, who, who is Carol Brennan, and that is C. Brennan, C B R E N N A N, at E H Hampton or E H Hampton NY.gov. <laughs> I always want to have spell it out East Hampton, but it's E H A M P T O N N Y.gov. Um, the Senior Citizen Center, many people know, closed on March 11th to protect a vulnerable population. And unfortunately, the um, All St. Patrick's Day Parade, our famous St. Patrick's Day Parade in Montauk has been canceled. The town then proceeds to ask you to, you know, all the protocols that we know, washing hands, et cetera. The big news today, though, is that the governors of New York New Jersey and Connecticut have announced broad restrictions on public life that will go into effect tonight at 8 p.m. First of all, as we know, um, the schools in New York are all closed, on Long Island especially. Um, County Executive Steve Ballone announced that yesterday. Two weeks, at least, of distance learning. I just saw um, an email from the supervisor of the, excuse me, the superintendent of the East Hampton High School, and they're gonna be working on distance learning for students. But as of today, um, casinos, gyms, and movie theaters in these three states, Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York, will be closed effective at 8 p.m. tonight. Um, bars and restaurants are limited to takeout and delivery. And I really encourage everyone to look at, um, this is the governor's announcement, by the way, on the um, governor's website. But look around and talk to your friends, because I, a lot of the restaurants here are helping out by giving curbside service and takeout, which is really important because we need people to keep working, we need people to eat, and we, we need- got it. We have to support them, absolutely. We have to support Without them. Doubt. yep. Absolutely. So that's <clears throat> a really, um, I think that's really a positive thing that you can do for the, for the town and for your neighbors and friends who work here. Um, in terms of just logistics, here's a really, these are some great tips. I called all these grocery stores today. The IGA on North Main Street is closing at eight. 
Stop and Shop will now close at 8. And this is all for the foreseeable future. Amagansett IGA, 8. Scavone's in Sag Harbor, 7. King Cullen in Bridgehampton is closing at 8 p.m. until further notice. This is a very much different because it usually is 24 hours. Citarella closes as usual at 7.30. And, um, oh, and then Starbucks. You can't go sit in Starbucks and enjoy their, um, their free Wi-Fi and sit around for hours. It's going to be pretty much takeout. So if you have the app, you can use that, or you can go stand in line, I guess. Great but to know. Good you to can't, know. You can't, you can't stay there. Another really fantastic thing to do before you go to the hospital to visit your friend or if, God forbid, you have any symptoms, make sure that you realize that not everybody can come in with you. So if you go to visit your friend who's in the hospital, only one adult can go. Um, if, you go if you're in the pediatric ward, there can be two people. If you go to the hospital because you feel sick, only one adult can be with you. Obviously, with children, you can have two people. But don't trust me. Go to the Southampton Stony Brook Hospital website and see for yourself. But make sure you do check before you go. I think the one thing to keep in mind is the fact that um, call ahead, no matter where you're going, yep. what you're doing, anything that's deemed non-essential, um, and I guess that's a pretty broad category, yeah. um, is supposed to be closed. Um, I don't know what the restrictions are on that, but the, uh, if they decide to stay open, like what would happen, I'm not well, sure. Well, I think what I've read, and this is again, it's call ahead no matter what, but just for people to know and be aware of, to be thinking about, pharmacies are gonna have to stay open. Sure. Grocery stores have to stay open, right. um, but then you get into you know shopping, and probably you should give it a little call. <laughs> right, absolutely. We do have we do have a list of a couple of other things that are not closed. Um, I'll touch on that real quick, Morgan, if I could. Sure. Um, we just got notification that the the retreat is not closed. Very important information. Um, the twenty four hour hotline is operational, with access to multiple languages. Um, councils are are available for phone sessions. Advocates will continue to educate clients on their rights, and the emergency shelter remains operational with safety protocols in place. There's more information for that on the retreatinc.org. Also, um, due to the state of emergency, um, the libraries will be closed, um, but what, we, what you can do is you can go to the library websites, which offer access to a variety of free streaming services, and you can check your library websites for that information. I really, I highly recommend the East Hampton Library website. Their online services are amazing, and if you're interested in all in East Hampton history, they have an entire archive of East Hampton history, including all of the stars. It is fascinating to go through, and you can look and see whatever you want to about East Hampton. It's amazing. That's great. And so, something else you can do at home, I mean, from, from a music perspective, um, one of the things I've been noticing, and I'm sure everybody else has as well, is that uh, a lot of people doing the Facebook concerts, a lot of people doing Instagram type of things, things on YouTube, um, but also on the LTV YouTube page, we have over, what, 30, probably close to 40 episodes of um, East End Underground. Yeah. Um, you can binge watch that, uh, which is uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, but just tuning into YouTube in general, um, it's wonderful. The, the musicians always seem to take the lead in the, these type of situations. Yeah. It's so creative in terms of, of, of finding things to do and um, finding different ways to do things. And, you know, we follow their lead. Um, art, uh, you, you can go and you can take a gallery tour of the uh, 82nd uh, Artist Members Exhibition at Guild Hall, led by the uh, Guild Hall um, curator assistant uh, Casey Deline, and the tour was filmed and can be watched on the Guildhall website at guildhall.org. A lot of the museums are doing that, and it's it's really incredible. The other thing is that we need to mention is that all of the theaters and venues, including Stephen Talkhouse, including um, Bay Street, have also closed. And just a reminder to people that if you bought tickets there, you might maybe you could just leave them there and not right. and not try to get a <laughs> refund because this is going to hit our arts organizations really really hard, and we need to support our friends out here in the arts. Absolutely, um, I have a little more information on uh, something that Gov Governor Cuomo just taking up a little le le a higher level. Excuse me. Um, so uh, Governor Cuomo calls on President Trump to take comprehensive federal action to combat uh, the coronavirus. And um, so the governor urged Trump 
uh, to deploy in an open letter uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to leverage its expertise, equipment, and people power to retrofit and equip existing facilities such as military bases or college dormitories to serve as temporary medical centers. The governor called on the president through the Food and Drug Administration and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to authorize states to certify a wider array of testing labs and methods in an effort to maximize testing capacity to identify and, and isolate positive cases faster. The governor also called for a uniform federal standard for when cities and states should shut down commerce and schools or cancel events. I think, um, I think uh, just my own personal opinion, that, that um, Governor Cuomo has really taken a, um, a real leadership role just in general for New York State, whether you like him or not. I think that you know, he's trying to do the right thing um, for our state. Um, response today from President Trump was he told a group of governors uh, Monday morning that they should not wait for the federal government to fill the growing demand for respirators needed to help people diagnosed with coronavirus. Respirators, ventilators, all other equipment, try getting it yourself, Mr. Trump told the governors during a conference call, a recording of which was shared with the New York Times. So that's where that information comes from. We'll be backing you, but try getting it yourself. Point of sales, much better, much more direct if you can get it yourself. End quote. The suggestion surprised some of the governors who have been scrambling to contain the outbreak and are increasingly looking to the federal government for help with equipment, personnel, and financial aid. Um, certainly more to follow on that, I think. Um, we have a few new numbers here in terms of um, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, Suffolk County is, is up to a number of 47 as of um, this show with uh, six new cases. Westchester County, 196, 18 new. New York City's taken over the lead with uh, 329 and 29 new cases. Nassau County, 98 with five new cases. And, and um, uh, there's our 729 now confirmed cases in New York State overall. I think, I, I think Steve Ballone had a press conference before and it, this, I wrote it down. So, but everyone needs to check. I think that the, in Suffolk County, the number might have already gone up to 74. Okay. Even just today. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the global impact, over um, 6,500 people have died from the virus. Right. So um, it is pretty serious, pretty serious thing. One of the things we also want to do while we're here, we just have a few minutes left, um, what we'd like to do is dispel some of those myths. All right, so you're gonna test me on the, my, my knowledge. Okay. All right, so let's see. Cold weather and snow can kill the new coronavirus. Is I, the myth. I think that's true. I mean, not true. I think that's a myth. Not, not, I think it's a myth. You commit it. <laughs> right. There is no reason to believe that cold weather can kill the new coronavirus or other diseases. The normal human body temperature remains the same regardless of the external temperature or weather. The most effective way to protect yourselves against the new coronavirus is by frequently cleaning your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or washing them with soap and water. No mention of toilet paper in there. Oh, my gosh. All. Where is it? We, well, surprising. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, what's another myth? All right, another myth. Um, taking a hot bath prevents the new coronavirus disease. Come on. No. Okay, you're right. There, that is a no. <laughs> for, for basically the same reason. Your body temperature remains the same no matter what. And once again, the best way to protect it is, is through the, uh, the cleaning that we all know about. How about this one? Are hand dryers effective in killing the new coronavirus? Huh? I don't think they are, but I also question that they're sanitary at all. But anyway, but let's say, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> okay, um, you are right, it is no. They're, they're not effective <laughs> in killing the virus to protect yourselves against the new coronavirus. Once again, frequently clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Real common denominator here, folks. Yeah, right? Um, and once your hands are clean, you should dry them thoroughly by using paper towels or the warm air dryer. Okay, I got another one for you. All right. How effective are thermal scanners in detecting people infected with the new coronavirus? Does a thermal scanner detect the virus? 
or uh, your right. temperature. How, how are they detecting the people infected with the virus? With the, if it, you have a temperature or not. Right. Oh, okay. Right. That's, I, that's I thought all, it was like... That's all it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it's doing. Burr, burr, burr. So if... And what's the number now? 100.4 is, oh, yeah. is, is the number for the temperature. For the temperature. That you need to be start, you know, being concerned about. Um, vaccines against pneumonia protect you against the new coronavirus. No. No, they don't. But they... They protect you against pneumonia, which would then drive down your immune system, which then makes you a little bit more uh, susceptible to the coronavirus or the uh, the result of the coronavirus, I guess, is probably I the guess, better Yeah, ways. I don't know. Yeah. Um, how about regularly rinsing your nose with saline? Does that help prevent the infection with the new coronavirus? I don't know. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you just there, like say that. There is I mean. no, there is no, <laughs> there is no evidence that regularly rinsing your nose with saline has protected people from infection with the new coronavirus. There is some limited evidence that regularly rinsing your nose with saline can help people recover more quickly from the common cold. However, but uh, regularly rinsing the nose has not been shown to prevent any kind of respiratory infections. Okay. Okay. Um, so. That's as much fun as we're going to have for today. <laughs> but just to keep you folks uh, updated, um, like I said, this is this is a first start for us. Um, we're going to be doing this live daily, Monday through Friday, um, with your help. So please give us some information uh, that you'd like to see or uh, suggestions on things that you'd like to see. Morgan? And, well, we also have the crawl that runs. Um, the lower crawl runs all day long, every 10 minutes. And... If you have information that you want to be on that, please let Michael know. Um, and then we have an alert crawl over that, which is usually information that's from the town. Um, so keep that. We'll keep that for the town and the village or official right. things. But in terms of the lower crawl, we have some updated news, but also we would love some input or Im things that people want to know. Right. Absolutely. So please join us tomorrow at 5 o'clock. If not before, we'll be replaying this throughout the day until the next live session tomorrow at 5. So thank you very much.